Hey guys, it's Danny. Very exciting video today. I am unpacking or unboxing some African violet leaves. Yep, I just took a leap of faith and I tried ordering again from my favorite seller, the seller from two years ago from UK. I was not sure if this was gonna work since the UK is not in EU anymore, but through whatever miracle it worked, I'm not gonna question it. <laughs> so you'll have the seller down below in the description if you're interested. Mind you though, just like any other plant, these two can get held up in customs, at the border, they're organics, uh, you know the drill. If you're in the UK, you probably will not have any issue. If you're everywhere else, probably you might talk to the seller. I don't know. If you've never ordered plants before, yeah, there is an issue with phytosanitary certificates. And since this is a private seller, I doubt they can offer the phytos. They're very expensive. But anyway, just wanted to put that out there before we start. As I was saying, I kind of took a leap of faith and it worked out. So. I just got them from the post office. I did pay tax though. I paid import tax, which was seven euros. <laughs> All right, uh, that's fine with me. I'm just hoping everything arrived in good order. Oh, I already see something beautiful. Okay, so what I ordered here are tiny African violets, minis and semi-minis, because the big ones, they take up a lot of space and I have some plans with these guys. If you remember, I lost my African violets in a super massive black hole. No, that's the title of a muse track. Super massive thrip outbreak. And it was so hard to treat them since they don't have a thick cuticle like orchids, they have what you would call, I guess, velvety leaves, not really, just normal leaves. It didn't work out all that great all the time with the oil solution. So now I wanna shelter them from thrips, either by using glass cloches, like, like this, you see that? Yeah, either a setup like this, either a glass cabinet or tower. I have some glass cabinets, some of them you can see to the side. In any case, the smaller the African violet, the better I can shelter it. So that's why I got tiny, tiny ones. And I also got leaves because I love propagating these guys. I love to see them grow, little roots and all of that. I don't mind if it's gonna take a while. I love the journey. And also I didn't wanna lose a lot of money in case they would have been destroyed at the border. So I got some little vases or glass containers here. We're gonna put them in water straight away as we unpack them. I got everything that I need here. I'm gonna show you how to do this. And with that said, let us finally begin. Oh, by the way, if you end up enjoying this video, please don't forget to give it a rating down below. It really helps it out. And hey, why not subscribe? I post all sorts of plant content lately. I know, I'm amazed as well. It's kind of fun. So first and foremost, this one says hand picked, but I don't have an ID. Wait, is this the name of the African violet? I think it is. I think it's the name of the African violet. I do recognize the foliage, I think, kind of. So yeah, as I can see, the foliage is kind of large, so I can actually go with one of... Ah! Oh my goodness! <laughs> I didn't calculate this! Oh my gosh! <laughs> what in the world did I just do right now? I, I'm just as surprised as you are. Did I tell you guys that I like glass? It's not something I always knew. I kind of figured it out lately. I find glass very, very decorative and I don't know. I like it. Right, let's dig in. So first off, hand picked. Look at it. Slightly dehydrated. I'm gonna give you close-ups, don't worry. Slightly dehydrated, but other than that, I think it looks just fine. Both of the leaves look pretty good. I don't see any rotting or anything bad. So I'm gonna get like hands down my favorite cutting tool. This is from Repotney. They sent it in PR many years ago. I think it's advertised as a one-time thing, disposable uh, cutter knife. Oh no, 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 no. It's anything but disposable. It's really, really good. I have minimal oxidation on it, but I am going to sterilize it or sanitize it. Some people say, oh, don't say sterilize anymore because you're not sterilizing it. Now I did. <laughs> All right, and let's, let's get this little box. I'm gonna cut the stem a little further up, trying to cut it at an angle. There you go. Really, really clean cut. I'm gonna put the stems in water. Yeah, I need to put a little bit more water. I'll do that. There we go. Mm, this one is not so clean. This one was a little mushier, but I don't think it's bad. Okay, yeah, I need a little bit more water here. 
I realize this little jar or whatever this is is a little excessive, but it's okay. I really don't have anything else. But there we go. First African violet down. Alrighty, next up, I'm gonna sanitize again my little cutting tool. I'm not gonna flame it anymore. <laughs> I did that just for the drama. <laughs> next up, we have some super, super, super tiny leaves. Nice, variegated, kind of serrated leaf. I think that's a good way to describe it. <gasps> Look at this variegation. Oh my goodness. Probably you cannot tell, but I'll give you close-ups. So we're gonna do the same thing. This is Heavenly Girl, by the way. And oh my goodness, isn't she heavenly? I kind of picked the ones with the flowers that I liked most, but now that I see the foliage, oh, it's so pretty. So let's do this again. Let's put some water in here. And yeah, I need a little bit more water. I need to make it kind of full. I think I have some shot glasses somewhere in the house. We don't drink shots. We don't really drink much, to be fully honest. So I don't know where they are, but I remember I had them in the house at some point. Okay, this one doesn't, doesn't sit all that well. I might try to find a different jar for it, but there we go. This is Heavenly Girl. I should actually write on these glasses. Let's do another very tiny one. Let's do Rob's Smarty Pants. I don't really remember which one was the gift, but usually the seller specifies. If I'm not mistaken, I used to actually have this one, but I lost it. I lost everything to thrips. I only have the hybrid that I made myself, which I will update you guys on. I filmed the entire process. It just took a lot because I took a lot. Okay, so I'm just gonna speed things up for you guys. No need to see me do the exact same thing about a hundred times. Next, another super tiny one. This is the gift. This is Gold Boy Lutek. Okay, this might actually be a Russian or Ukrainian name and I don't know how to read these languages, but I'm going to put the name again in the tag. Found another glass. We are good. Okay, next up, let's do this one. This is NK Vicky, this is a variegated one as well. I love variegated African violets so, so much, but they can be tricky in comparison to other African violets. They have their quirks. Sometimes they can go fully variegated and that's not okay because they don't have enough chlorophyll. And I've had it happen. The plant just stops growing all of a sudden since it doesn't photosynthesize as efficiently. So definitely it can be tricky. I think I'm gonna put this one in here. Next up, RS Premium. This looks like a semi-mini with slightly bigger leaves, but all of these guys were very compact. At least this is what I saw in the pictures. So I went for the most compact ones just to make my life a little bit easier with them. This one I think I'll be putting in here. And the last one, this is DS Rumianets. Again, I'm sure this is not an English name. And this one looks a little big. I won't lie, maybe it is a semi-mini, but it's one of the big ones. All right, all done. Let me just show you where I'm going to keep them, at least for now. All right, here we are. I decided to not write on all of the glasses and I just kind of placed them on their envelopes that they came with. So each bottle is set on the envelope with the name. Hopefully I won't regret this. Hopefully it's not gonna discolor or anything. I don't think so. I will make tags eventually, but this is where I'm keeping them for now. Look at that blue. It is so intensified. Yes, because this cabinet has the barinas. Yes. I'm not sponsored by Barina. I wish I were, to be fully honest, I would not say no, <laughs> but no, I'm not. I purchased Barinas myself and I really like them. And this is a rootstock cabinet from Ikea, which I did film putting together. I have one of my build assembly type of videos prepared. I might've posted it already, depends. I pre-record a lot lately, so I'm not sure in what order I post stuff, but for now, yeah, they're gonna sit here and in this way, they will be protected from the perils of the outside world. They are right here next to this shelf. And I think I'm gonna keep them here for now and see what happens. I did notice that Ikea started to bring 
more types of cloches. If you guys know, they have a lot of cloches without a base and that's not fun. They brought more cloches with bases. Some of them are gold, some of them are black and it goes so good with all of my Vistcho and now Rootsta style here, so yeah. I'm gonna definitely look into those cloches and when I have cloches, obviously, I'll put them on normal shelves. But yeah, I just need to protect them, you guys. Just like I do the Milano Chrysum here, which again, I filmed the rescue of this guy. Might have posted it already, not sure. This is how I wanna keep them because it's, it's hard, I, I can't, I can't control a super massive pest infestation, especially if the plants are sensitive, especially when I have a lot of plants to treat. I'm doing this right now, like all of my orchids are still outside. I only have a few in the greenhouse, as you can see, because these are the ones that I actually sprayed and the ones that are outside are not sprayed yet. They're not coming back until they're sprayed. That's what I'm doing right now. And you guys know I have a lot of plants. Anyway, so I will come back with an update when these guys start rooting. Maybe we're gonna pot them already. So I will see you guys then. Alrighty, here we are, an eternity later. I don't even know how much time has elapsed, but I'll look at the file date and I'll put it on the screen. It's been maximum a couple of months later and all of my leaves have rooted. It is time to pot them up and eagerly wait for the tiny plantlets. So I have myself some orchid pots here. These are the only pots that I have of this size. So we're just gonna have to use them. I would much rather like it if they were opaque, but what to do, we're gonna do with what we have. So let's just go ahead and pot them up. I will pot one leaf per little pot because one leaf can create multiple plantlets. So at some point we will unpot them. We're gonna have to separate the plantlets as well. So you can imagine if I put two leaves in one of this, it's just gonna be a mess. So one leaf per little pot. Completely forgot my soil, hold on. All right, have some all purpose soil here. We'll see if we're gonna need more. Now the soil is already pre-fertilized. This is what it said on the bag. So I'm not gonna use slow release fertilizer or things of the sorts. And by the way, I did not use any fertilizer in the water that I used for propagating or rooting the leaves. So very, very easy. I'm gonna put a layer of soil at the bottom then I'm gonna hold the leaf and I'm not going to bury it a whole lot, just slightly, just as much as to just keep it in the pot because the plantlets will actually sprout from the very edge, pretty close to where the roots are sprouting from. So I want them to reach the light as fast as possible, but definitely I want the roots to be covered. These plants do not produce aerial roots if you are acquainted with orchids, but not so much with African violets. Yeah, they're nothing like orchids actually. So we're gonna do the same thing for this one. Well, this root seems to be quite unruly and it's okay if the leaf doesn't sit upright. You don't need it to. We're only interested in the offsprings. Is that correct to say? You know what I mean, in the plantlets. So, which one did we have here? This is DS Rumianets. I'm actually going to write directly on the pot. And actually, all of these will be sitting in the detolf shelves where I have my slipper orchids as well. So yeah, I'm going to water them really, really well, not letting those roots dry out. I'm gonna do this for all of the leaves. So let me show you each of them, how many roots they created within this time, because some of them didn't really root as much. So I can definitely see a difference. Look at these. Yeah, we're gonna get to them. I can definitely see a difference in the hybrids and in their vigorousness. Next up, Heavenly Girl. This is Heavenly Girl, right. So I do have some very tiny pots here. I'm gonna place these leaves in the tiny pots because they are tiny as well. Wow, this one has little plantlets already forming. Very, very tiny nubs. You see how tiny the petiole is of this leaf? Yeah, it is absolutely enough to properly propagate a leaf of an African violet. All right, next up we have Rob's Smarty Pants. <laughs> That's a cute name. And this one again created a lot of roots and we have quite a few little plantlets starting to sprout. So same type of a deal. Just gonna 
pot the leaf with all of its roots inside the pot. And even if there is a little bit of dirt on top of the plantlets, that is okay. I'm just not gonna bury them very deep because you can't imagine it's gonna take a while until they reach the surface and that's just unnecessary. <laughs> so they are just very, very close to the surface here. And with watering actually, the tiny little leaves, oh, I was about to do something very stupid. So yeah, with watering, the tiny little leaves will be revealed. <laughs> Next up here we have RS Premium. This is a bigger leaved African Violet. And to be fully honest, I don't even remember how these guys should look like. I will try to post some pictures on the screen, obviously in the first part of the video, but it's been so long, I don't remember what I purchased. I'm sure they're lovely though. And if everything goes okay, I might get more, but I think I'm definitely gonna stick to smaller sized ones, to miniatures and semi minis, cause I kind of like them more. <laughs> I like everything that is tiny, that is mini. That's one. And second, because they don't take up so much space, it's, it's just so much easier to find a place to display them and to keep them. And one of the things that I really, really dislike about African violets is that they are a pest magnet, especially for thrips. And I would really, really like it if I could keep them under glass. So the detailed shelf is perfect for what I want to do. But obviously it is a little bit limited. It's not a very big shelf. So next up, this is hand picked. That's how it's called. The leaf really curved on this one. Some of them do that. It's gonna look a little weird, but it's okay. Next up, L.E. Goluboj Livtik. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. And lastly, the ones that actually barely rooted. Ooh. That sounds like a broken lawnmower. <laughs> Sorry about that noise. I, I don't know what's going on. Too many neighbors to ever have any peace and quiet around here. So this one is NK Vicky and really there aren't many roots. I really hope the stem is still okay. It is still okay. So I'm just gonna plant it. Maybe the extra nutrients will help it out. This water had no nutrients by the way, but the substrate is indeed fertilized. Do you guys have noisy neighbors? <laughs> Let me know. I feel like my entire life I've been surrounded by noisy neighbors. Maybe I just don't hear myself, but I do feel like I don't make so much noise. I feel like I always like think of, oh, what are the neighbors gonna say whenever I do a big noise? I'm like, ugh, I cringe a little when I have to drill something or things of the sorts. Others though appear to have absolutely zero problems. Like screaming out of the blue on the street no problem is it just me am i i think i'm a little over the top of the quiet thing but it just bothers me so much well nothing to do about it so doesn't matter but yeah i'm trying to finish this video faster because i hear a lot of commotion outside so <laughs> who knows what we're gonna hear in this video so this is nk vicky right let me show you where i'm gonna keep these and here they are all finished up. I will keep them in my D12 shelves where I currently have my slipper orchids. And yeah, obviously now they don't look so good. <laughs> They're on the trays, but I will end up keeping just one plantlet of each and then the other ones I'll just give away. So maybe the D12 shelves could actually be a place for my slipper orchids and my African violets. Cause right now you see, it's a little empty. I love it, <laughs> so empty, but you know, some of the shelves are completely empty. Don't mind that. I actually changed up the uh, transformers, the, the plugs actually, this whole mess there. Anyway, need to do some cable management, but yeah, this is where they will sit and I will keep you up to date. Maybe I'm gonna make another video when I'm gonna separate the babies and I'm gonna put them up and then hopefully they're gonna bloom. Fingers crossed. Alrighty guys, so thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope you've enjoyed hanging out with me today. And let me know if you're excited for some more African violet content. I know many of you were hoping I will start growing African violets again. And I will, I'll try a few different plants. I like to variate things. It kind of keeps me motivated. After eight and a half years, only orchids, only orchids, although I love them so much, it can be a little bit, I don't know how to say this, inhibiting, less creative 
let's say. So yeah, having other types of plants and other types of content actually inspires me with the orchids and just keeps me fresh, keeps me on my toes and keeps this whole YouTube thing enjoyable. The, the worst thing you can do is do YouTube and not enjoy it, right? Righty. Enough blabbing. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. Subscribe to my channel for more orchid videos, tutorials, experiments, updates and other fun orchid subjects. If you wish to support the channel, do consider becoming a member or visit the merch store linked down below in the description. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook, it's always nice to stay in touch there as well. And I'll see you all next time. Bye!